so uh abel i'll start with you i mean this is such a yeah. fascinating concept of a film uh and, and so I'm, I'm curious how did how did the you know where was the birth of this concept for you you know i you know i'm always asked that question that's the, the and, and i sometimes i try to answer it it's you know it's like where does where does an idea come from is, is a tough one. Obviously, it's a pandemic. I was in the pandemic. I was thinking about, you know, old school spy movies. I was thinking about, you know, we were just talking on, on another interview about uh, Training Day and Bad Lieutenant, and then he was talking about Region Bull and, and these kind of performances. And then there was a thing that, that Ethan and I had with like very genre films, you know, say the opposite of a bad lieutenant performance or a, you know, a, a character, you know, whether it's Clint and Josie Wells, or I mean, we could, we could hit, you know, that's coming from another place, you know, way different place. But the effect did powerful, you know, the effect on both of us, these certain films that where the actor is playing a different kind of way maybe than, than, than the way we do, you know? And I think I was thinking about those films, you know, like a, a genre film might be a word for it. I was thinking about American soldiers, you know, Dick Moore in combat, as crazy as that is, if anybody even knows what I'm talking about, but, you know, and that's, I think, was kind of the genesis of, of it and then creating a world where he could exist in that's real, but surreal. I know, Ethan, how's that? I know what you're saying. A lot of what the movie's playing on is audiences' expectations of what movies are supposed to be and have been and are. And when you're playing a character, there's some kind of movies that are obvious personal filmmaking where you're looking inward and Bad Lieutenant is a great example of that. But there's another kind where you're kind of speaking through the language of cinema and, and what characters mean because, because they're in a movie, you, you know? And a lot of that has become our cultural identity, how we think about things. And so some part of Abel is both doing that and undoing it, you know? And I knew that's what we were up to. Uh, you know, the legacy of films that star the American soldier is long and, and through various different wars and lots of different iconography that you can point to. And we're both playing on it and, and breaking it apart at the same time. So it's a different kind of performance and a different kind of, of movie. But I knew, I knew the language that he was talking about because we both have a kind of shared love of, of movies and how they affect our brain. So, Ethan, since you do mention the American soldier, I mean, this is not the first time that we've seen you in a sort of war genre film. I mean, obviously, with with Good Kill uh, was was one of the the key ones. But I mean, what what was it like then exploring that sort of identity through Abel's lens for this film? Well, some part of you knows that when you're playing a U.S. soldier and you wear the uniform, that you're exploring the identity of America. What are we? What is our uniform? Uh, what, what do we represent? What we represent changes in different climates, different atmospheres, different years. But it's always interesting to think about and to put it in the context of Rome, put it in the context of fear. Uh, you know, what, who is the enemy? What is the enemy? Are we the enemy? Uh, is the fear real? Is it not real? Um, that's one of the things that Abel was doing that I just found extremely interesting. Um, in a lot of ways, I, I like this with a lot of the best filmmakers I've ever worked with. You're kind of hunting for the movie. You're hunting for it. You, 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 you know what it feels like, what it sounds like, what it smells like. You can see its tracks in the snow or whatever, and you're hunting for it. I um, mean, you're not exactly sure what you're doing. Abel, is a self-proclaimed instinctual filmmaker. And I follow my gut too. That's what I like. I want to be on a set 
with somebody who's shooting from the hip and has really good eyesight, you know, uh, and good instincts uh, about what's what they're trying to communicate. Because then we can just get in the same wavelength and roll. Uh, and then we're not, we don't have an agenda with the audience. We're trying to uncover something else. You know, one of my favorite lines that Sam Shepard used to say was that what he hated about being in rehearsal is all the actors looked at him like he was the author. Um, and, he like, <laughs> um, and, and he, he felt like if the play was any good, he wasn't the author. You know, and the actors needed to chase the same muse he was chasing. You know, I don't know where it came from. I don't know what I'm saying. You know, I work hard to not know exactly because we all smell when a writer has an agenda with us. You know, when they think they're really smart, you know, you kind of want to get away from that kind of thinking uh, and let something that's bigger than you unravel. Uh, and that comes through collaboration and guts and intuition and your head being in the right place before you start. So then, Abel, on that note, what was it like? I mean, you you utilize so many different filming styles in this movie that I think is is a really interesting uh, interesting like approach to the film. What was it like finding those various styles to find the right look of the film? All right, let me get that. We're using very um, different film stocks. What was what was it? All the different styles you use. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe losing it. He's just asking about all the different the styles you're using. Using, you know, I mean, it was it was really one. I mean, we were shooting, you know, Sean Williams style, which comes from, you know, a continuation of, you know, like he worked in our crew. Now he's DP, and now you know, it, it's it's it's. Uh, it's Rome. It's what Rome gives you at night. It's what the night is empty. It's that, I mean, it's like strange, you know, but it's my neighborhood. So it's strange, but I know my hood, you know, I, I'm a street filmmaker and that, those are my streets now. I've lived there for seven years. So I know, you know, for seven years I'm walking around and it's just in my subconscious, you know, not my subconscious. I just know that's where I want to shoot. This is where I want to shoot. <clears throat> He's using you know, it's a soldier just grabbing information on the street. The camera he's using, like I said, he's not, you know, he doesn't have his light meter out. He's got a gun. He's, he's, he's in a war. He's just trying to just shoot, which gives us, so we just have two realities. It's, it's the soldier doing his job and us doing the thing we always do, which is, you know, just push that, that, that you know, kind of, you know, push our, our, our you know, our look to match that situation. And, um, you know, we just learn it from the last movie and it's coming to the next movie and Sean's doing another movie. And these movies are almost the same movies anyway, because we're all seeing the same vision. And, um, you know, in the post though, we took that video, he took, you know, Sean was using this funky video camera cause he's, you know, he's a rebel. And he's got to use rebel shit. And then okay. we added, we started adding grain because you could do this again from the title zeros and ones, you know. So to the main look of the film, which was consistent, we started adding the grain we used to use in the early nineties. It's an app now. So like with the grain, with, you know, when you use negative, the silver in there, you know, when you shoot negative, you know, that's precious metal you have. And that's what you're seeing. I mean, when you see a movie projected, you're basically seeing the shadow of silver, right? Uh, but now we're in, you know, the, the, the digital world, but we're actually, they can recreate that feel. And we're adding that feel as an element to the look, okay? Uh, on, you know, the film, once we had the soldier's camera, hey, man, you know, the, the sky's the limit. We could go, you know, but it was basically what he shot. I mean, night vision, those are the shots he was shooting. I mean, he was shooting the movie with the other guy, you know, right? I mean, you were shooting 
Those are, you know, I got some good shots. Those tricks, man. Yeah, you fucking damn right you did. Because he's in, he's in the best position. He's right in the middle of the fucking shot. Excuse me. He's right in the middle of the shot. He's, he, he can't be where he's coming from there. So, you know, it's a low budget filmmaking, man. You get two for the price of one. You get two actors for the price of one. Now that I'm thinking about it, these are all, um, you know, this is street, you know, guerrilla technique. So, Ethan, I'll, I'll direct my next question to you. This is one of the first times that we've seen you take on dual roles uh, on screen. What was that like for you really trying to, I mean, well, tackling that that sort of uh, uh, acting job, I should say? I don't know. You know, in, in a way, I almost didn't even look at it like that. I still felt there's something at the heart of that movie that's trying to break down uh you know this thing i kept i kept thinking about back back then while we're making about dualistic thinking is it is it real is it imagined is the fear real real is he the good guy is he the bad guy is he the brother is he this and that the truth is some unknowable mystery that lives around us all the time and so i the, the short answer is i enjoyed it I mean, I, I enjoyed getting to uh, one character is ext extremely restrained and one is unrestrained. So that's just fun for me, right? It's, you know, one guy's holding everything in and the other guy's letting everything out. And so it, it, it was fun to drive the same car different ways, uh, so to speak. And, you know, basically my job is just to kind of give Abel what he wants and turn him on and make him laugh. And, um, <laughs> You know what I mean? And just try to listen to him and listen to the movie that he's seeing, you know? And I'd ask a lot of questions and he'd shake his head like I was the dumbest person in the world. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't already get it. And obviously I was a moron if I didn't get it. But slowly you start to get it. I think the same true of Sean. We slowly start to see this movie and what Abel's trying to say with it by his likes and dislikes. And, uh, and we all teach each other. And so I just enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, and each job has its own weird challenges that you don't expect. I mean, this one was obvious with the pandemic and all these restraints on us. And, uh, but somehow that's where the fun erupts. So Abel, I'll direct the next one to you. What were some of the biggest challenges for you even being used to the independent filmmaking world, what what was the biggest challenge for you filming this during the pandemic? You know, I say keeping everybody alive, man. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, that's, that's really the director's job. You know what I mean? I mean, we come from real action stuff, you know, pre-CGI. You know, I don't know, that was like our thing for a long time, which was very dangerous, but shooting, Pandemic, more dangerous, you know? I mean, making sure no one got sick, you know? <clears throat> you know, I mean, I'm 70 years old, so, you know, and I can read a graph. So I'm on the wrong end of that graph, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but like, it's like, I don't know how to say it. You know, it's like a snake shedding its skin with making films. Like this comes a point where I'm at, I gotta make a movie. The script might not be right. The actors, we you know, might we might have to wait a, a week, two weeks. You know, it's, it's just like the moment comes where you got to go for it. And 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 actually, it was a bigger moment then because the moment came where okay, you can live the rest of your life in your house. You know, okay, you know what are we gonna do now? I mean, it wasn't just me and Ethan looking at that. The whole world's looking at that. Okay, is it time to step out? We got to stay protected. It just, you know, it, it, it puts it to the test. We got to show compassion to each other. It's a small crew we're shooting fast. The nature of the film is a pandemic. The way he's wearing masks, they're washing their hands in the shots. That's not, you know, it had to be that way because there was no vax. There was, you know, but everything, everything was cool. I think that that had to be the biggest one. Well, I'm I'm glad everybody made it through because this is a, a really interesting. And yeah, then he got oh. sick after he went home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it it's uh it, yeah this is really quite the interesting ride and i think uh i think people are going to be talking about it for a while once it comes out um before i go ethan i have one final question for you i know given the secretive nature of it you can't discuss it too much but i was curious if you can give me any kind of tease of what we can expect from knives out too uh knives out well, yeah I'm, i just have a cameo in that movie just you know, a cameo don't, don't expect much from me <laughs> well I, I i look forward to seeing you in it nonetheless and i look forward to spreading the word about zeros and ones once it finally comes thank you guys both thank so you, much bro. for taking the time it. you care out, man bro. appreciate it's the time yeah absolutely and it's already out so start spreading it start spreading the word because it's out